two different types of navigation devices. Which one are you currently using and which one do you think you're going to be using after this video? If that's of some interest, keep watching and let's get into it. So let's talk, let's talk about smartphones first for our navigation purposes. Now there are a multitude of navigation apps available and there is surely to be one available out there for you uh, that you would, that would suit your requirements and your preferences on terms of the, the usage that you have. Uh, I use a variety of different ones at the moment. I do use the BMW Motorrad navigation app. I do use Calimoto. I use Google, Google Maps. So I use a variety of different ones. Um, the main one that I use for my planning purposes though, so my online version of the, of the app uh, online for planning and my routes, et cetera, and my, especially my trips that I've done recently to Shropshire and also uh, North Wales, I use Calimoto. So I can plan on that and then I can import those GPX files from that particular uh, app to any navigation app that, I've, uh, that I wanna be using. So, um, so th that's the versatility of these apps, right? They can all import um, GPX files that you may have used or that you are building on your online version and import them. So um, even though the BMW navigation app does not have an online version for you to be able to plan, other, um, other navigation software is available for you to do that on your computer and then load it into your phone and use it uh, use the GPX file on your your uh, navigation app that you are using. And I do that quite often. I plan on one and then move it into my phone via the GPX file. And so um, the versatility of these are brilliant. We all have these anyway, right? They're, they're, they're quite expensive, right? So uh, an iPhone average costs, what, a thousand pounds, just under a thousand pounds or over a thousand pounds. This is the Google 6 Pixel Pro. And um, I, I went with this one because of the picture quality that you get with the camera. So the phones are, are smartphones, depending on which one you have, um, they're all brilliant, right? You don't really get a bad smartphone anymore. So the, the offering is really, really good. And there's a multitude of apps, that, as, as we've talked about, that you can use with your smartphone. So it's, it's, a really, it's a really easy option, right? We have them and there's plenty of uh, nav apps out there. And the, the number of cradles that are available to mount your phone to your bike, whether it be quad lock, whether it be a generic one from online, I use, um, I've been using this one for many, many years um, with my BMW sat nav preparation, just plugs onto the, onto the sat nav preparation. You can charge your phone, put your phone in, and it works really, really well. On my Yamaha T7, I've got the quad lock mount anti-vibration uh, dampener on it as well although it, remain, it remains to be seen how good they do actually work. Now, both BMW and Quadlock claim to have anti-vibration uh, anti dampening uh, qualities within their products. BMW claimed that their, their crossbar mount that they have, uh, where they mount their uh, sat-nav preparation, they claim to have uh, anti-vibration dampening built into that. Um, that remains to be seen and or proven and also Quadlock with their anti-vibration dampener also make the claims that uh, it is very, very good for phones. However, uh, recently my uh, iPhone 7 stopped working or the camera stopped working. Here's a video clip of what my camera now looks like. So you can, as you can see, it's completely ruined and I can't use the camera on my iPhone. So I've had to get a new phone. And in doing so, that led me to start thinking about whether I want to continue to use my smartphone or whether I want to consider a specific navigation device, a GPS device, which of course is meant to be attached to my bike. And herein lies the issue with the smartphone devices. So Apple last year released a statement and I quote, exposure to vibrations like those generated by high, high powered motorcycle engines might impact iPhone cameras. They go on to say uh, that the, the OIS, which is the, uh, which is the optical image stabilization, as well as the AF, the um, uh, closed loop autofocus that the iPhones have, uh, they go on to say that the OIS and the closed loop AF systems in iPhone are designed for durability. However, as is the case with many consumer electronics that include systems like OIS, long-term direct exposure to high amplitude vibrations within certain frequency ranges may degrade the performance of these systems and lead to reduced image quality for photos and videos. It is recommended to avoid exposing your iPhone to extended high amplitude vibrations. And I'm sure that's gonna follow on to their warranty where they will not replace your phone or, or repair your phone uh, based on their warranty now, because I'm sure there's many a claim 
that has been coming through because of this and as a result they've put out this statement and I'm sure this is going to go across smart devices or smartphones uh, across the board eventually. So we have our smartphones not built and are not meant to be attached to your motorbike but the development of these smartphones and navigation apps has meant that we've been using, using them for many years and using them without any issues at all. Certainly for me I didn't really believe the hype around these uh, uh, vibrations coming through the, the phones and damaging my phone until it actually happened to me and I don't want to go through the same process again. So that leaves me with a navigation device or a GPS device. And so um, I have purchased the uh, Garmin XT. Um, so the reason I've gone with the Garmin XT and not the BMW uh, Nav 5 or Nav 6 is because the Nav 5 and Nav 6 are pretty darn rubbish. Uh, there's been so many um, reported issues with these uh, navigation devices uh, on Facebook and other social media platforms and for the cost of them as well, five or six hundred pounds, uh, new, brand new. I mean, they're a little bit cheaper now and that's because nobody's buying them, right? They're, they're, they've been proven to be unreliable and uh, I'm not sure if Garmin are actually coming out with a Nav 7 or not or if they're going to be updating the software to make it um, more reliable, but Nav 5s and Nav 6s are mostly unreliable. Now, I know that there's going to be many of you out there that have had a Nav 5 or Nav 6 and never had an issue with it. And if that is the case for you, then that is absolutely brilliant. Delighted to know that your product is still working uh, tip top. Many people out there though have uh, got rid of their Nav 5 or Nav 6s or it's just become redundant for them because of the issues that they have and they can't actually sell them on and it wouldn't be right to sell on a faulty product anyway. So um, uh, the, the BMW sat-nav preparation has now become quite largely uh, redundant for me. I am not using a smartphone cradle on there because I don't want to damage my camera on my phone like I have with my iPhone. And I don't want to use the sat-nav uh, the BMW uh, Nav 5 or Nav 6, so hence the purchase of the Garmin XT. Now, I do prefer to use my phone and I have stayed away from navigation devices because I, I do love to use my phone and the cradles that come and it's been a, a wonderful experience for me using my phone. I've not had to fork out lots of money on a sat-nav device um, that is largely unreliable. Um, and uh, But now I've had to fork out for a new phone. I don't want to do that again. So. Um, in purchasing a, whether you purchase a Nav 5, Nav 6, or the Garmin XT, or the TomTom Tom 550 Premium, those devices are built to be on your motorbike, right? So within the warranty, if you get damage for uh, anti-vibration or vibration through the, uh, your motorbike to the device, well then your warranty will, will cover you for that because these devices are meant to be and built to be on your motorbike, whereas iPhones and other smartphone devices are not. So therein lies a, a, a one benefit with the sat-nav devices versus your, versus your smartphone in that they're actually meant to be attached to your motorbike. I've reluctantly made the change to a GPS device and so that leaves me with how am I going to attach this to my bike and I'm not using the uh, the BMW sat-nav uh, preparation although there is a bracket that an Italian company makes I'll put a link in the description and here it is on screen they make this bracket to fit to your BMW sat-nav preparation and then attach the Garmin XT so it's a, a bracket specifically for the Garmin XT and so you can you can choose to use the uh, the uh, existing sat-nav preparation on your bike when you purchase that bracket. The only thing is at the moment though is that it's relatively expensive and they are out of stock unfortunately and so um, I've been looking around for uh, an alternative device that I can attach my Garmin to because of security purposes and so in my next video um, I'll be showing you the installation of the Garmin XT uh, with the bracket and it's a lockable bracket that I've got so it'll secure it to, to the bike without anybody um, having a, a, an easy opportunity to nick it. Um, so that's going to be coming up in my next video. And so yes I've reluctantly moved to the GPS device but looking forward to using the Garmin XT. I'm going to be able to still plan my routes on an uh, online version 
and import, import the GPX file to uh, my, my device. And the good thing about these now as well is that the Garmin XT also allows you to plan routes off-road as well. And so uh, that's another reason that I've stayed away from GPS devices is because unless you, unless you fork out quite a lot of money for an expensive one, uh, you end up not being able to plan your off-road routes as well if you do some off-road riding, hence why I've stayed largely away from them as well. So things have moved on, which is really good, and so I'm looking forward to giving the Garmin XT a go. I don't know if you're in the same predicament as me at the moment, but if you if you are and you want to remove your BMW cradle, your sat-nav uh, preparation, off your bike, there's a video uh, at the end of this uh, video and also a link in the description. Check that out, it should only take you a few minutes to remove your um, sat-nav prep off your bike. Keep hold of it though, don't throw it away uh, because you might wanna uh, reinstall that one if you come to sell your BMW. As you know, most of these bikes now come stock standard with the sat-nav preparation. And of course, there's some fantastic brackets out there to be able to uh, 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 mount a sat nav too as well as the cradles for, for your phone so don't throw it away keep hold of it and reinstall it when you come to sell your bike so uh, yeah that will show you how to do that should only take you a few minutes to do once you've seen the video i'll come back to the question that we had at the start of the video and that is which device are you now going to use um, if you're going to continue to use your smartphone make sure that you get as good an anti-vibration dampener as you possibly can uh, I, I think your camera will end up uh, faulting like mine did. I've been using mine for a couple of years, so it might take a little while to, to actually get there. But it is going to happen. It's, it's inevitable if you keep doing high mileage on it on these big uh, on these big bites that have the right frequencies to be able to damage the phones on your uh, the the cameras on your phones. Uh, so um, hopefully um, I've been able to give you some information that's going to uh, help you decide if you're going to continue to use your smartphone or if you're going to go the GPS device uh, route like I am. So my next video that's gonna be coming up is showing you how I'm gonna install the uh, Garmin XT to the power supply on the bike, the switched power supply, so stay tuned for that. And also the bracket that I'm gonna be using to mount it to the bike now that I've removed my sat-nav preparation that BMW supplied with the bike. So stay tuned for that, that's gonna be coming up. If you've got any questions or comments, about the video today, leave them down in the description down below or email me at billysbikeadventures at gmail.com. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you again very soon.